Hello and welcome back. In the last lesson, we did the work to understand the flow and how the authenticate function from Passport is connected to the, the strategy that we registered in the middleware. We kind of got the end-to-end the -end flow in that little part of the process working. Where we left off is we just created a, a generic response here just to end this, the response cycle. But the next part that we need to start thinking about here, and this is part of the way that we need to use this authenticate function, when we respond back to the client from the server, this is like the end of the authentication flow. We need to make sure that we're sending back information that is going to create a valid authenticated session. So the way that we're going to do this we're going to reference the request that's coming in and i'm just going to comment that out for now so we'll reference the request and there's going to be this method that's going to be available to us called login if we take a quick look at that it says it's going to initiate a, a login session for the user it takes in an option here which defaults to true which is the session so what we're going to do for now is pass in the user that we that we get back here from our verify callback and then we're going to set up another callback here and at this stage all we're interested there is in is the error if we do get an error at this stage we just want to return that error to the next middleware in the pipeline. Otherwise, if there is no error at this stage, we can send our response. I'll just make use of that response that we, we set up in the last lesson. Now you're going to see something slightly different when we, we test our Postman. At this stage, calling this request.login function is setting up the, the actual authenticated session. So let's test this out and heads up, we are going to get an error here, but this is one of those planned ones. I'm going to hit the, the login endpoint here and you're going to see our API crashes and we get this error that says fail to serialize the user into the session. We can get an idea at this stage that that's what the API is trying to do at this stage. It's, it's trying to take that valid user that we've supposedly validated and out wants to create authentication session with it. But obviously it's saying it's failed to do that now. The reason is we're going to have to do some additional work to to set up the the session configuration for our api and let's get cracking and set this up straight away let's kill the server now we're going to need to install a, an npm package we're going to install this package called uh, cookies dash session can hit enter and once that package has been installed you can just verify in your package.json if it is indeed there and we can see it and the first step as always is just to require that in at the top of our index.js file so we'll name this cookie session we'll requ require this in we'll just reference that cookie session library and now we've got a reference to it in our index.js we want to set up some configuration for this cookie session to register a function in our express middleware that's going to go ahead and do the work necessary to to sign and create the information that we get back from our, our login request into into a cookie so what we're going to do is we're going to use the app.use to register our middleware and just take note that this cookie session middleware that we registering it needs to come above everything else um, specifically above the express.json the order matters in terms of the order that you register your middleware in i'll reference the the cookie session we'll invoke that and this is going to take in an object of options so the options that we interested interested or need to set up for ourselves here is the name and this is going to be the literal name of the cookie that it's going to name the cookie that it sends back we can call this something simple app auth whatever the name of your application or whatever you want to name that cookie you can call it whatever it is it's just a string the next property here in the object is going to be this keys and it's going to take an array and this is going to be some type of secret or secrets that um, you have in your app what I've written in here is secret new and secret old. Just at this stage, I just wanted to take just one note. Obviously, this API that we're building is for learning purposes. This is just like a demonstration. Uh, you never, ever, ever going to to just hard code your strings with secret sensitive information like this uh, in a production environment or like any other type of environment that's a bit more serious. This is like a big no-no in terms of security. So uh, these kind of things will be injected through environment variables or through your server, depending on what environment it's on. So obviously, and I think it goes without saying, but like just never ever do that. This is just for, for learning purposes. And the, the reason why this is an array and there's uh, multiple keys is that this gives you the ability to, to reference old keys that you've rotated. So let's say 
on day one of your application, you've got a, a key called one. For whatever reason, you need to change that secret key because it got exposed and you change it to two. You can then set the new key as the, the first index in the array. And then any old keys that you still want to be able to validate for, you can reference in the order in terms of the indexes in that array. And so the last property that we're interested in here is the max age of the cookie. So this is like setting the expiry time for how long it can be valid for. And so we're going to say 60 times 60 times 24, and that's just going to give us one day. That should be good for our own purposes. And so now that we've got the, the cookie session set up in our middleware, we've got a way to create and configure a cookie. And the, the last step that we need to do to, to get rid of that, that error that we saw is to actually set up an additional piece of middleware. And we're going to reference the, the passport package. And we're going to call the passport.session function. Just invoke it with like an empty arguments in there. And just take note of the order. This goes below the, the initialize function and just above the, the passport.use. Now that we, we've implemented that, let's head on over. Well, first things first, let's make sure that we got our API up and running and we can head on over to Postman and let's try and do a register. The register seems to work fine and that's good. And so let's try to do a login. And you're gonna see, even though that we did the, the work that we wanted to do to implement this session, uh, we're still getting an error here and that's saying fail to serialize the user into the session. And that's, that's fine, that's all good because there's one last piece of the puzzle here just to get this working. We need to set up an additional function here on Passport. And so we're going to reference passport. We're going to call this function called serialize user. And this function just takes in a callback. And in here, we're going to receive a user and another done callback that you've seen is like a common pattern in, in the passport library. And at this stage, just to, to kind of see what's going on and to add to our, our race condition list that we, we've been building out here. Let's just say that this is going to be the fourth step in the whole flow. And we'll just call this uh, serialize user. And then out of interest, let's see what we're actually getting back in this user object. We just need to stringify that object. And to kind of end or, or pass the flow back to the next part of the middle where we need to return this done callback. And you can see this takes in an error or and an ID. So at this stage, we don't have any errors. So I'm going to pass in null. The next argument that we pass in here is the, the ID. And you can see that it's optional. The idea here is that the serialized function is going to receive the ID from the user object that's been coming from these upstream functions. And it's going to take that ID and it's going to pass it into the cookie. And it's going to be available for us in order to, to reference that ID in any future sessions or authentication sessions that are coming in. So at this stage, we want to pass in the user ID into this done callback. I'm going to hit save, uh, just do semicolons. And uh, API looks like it's still running, so no syntax errors. So let's just hit the, the register endpoint again and head on back over to our, our login. Um, and I just want to make sure that we, we've got the correct data in here. I think something must have happened between uh, different tests, but just make sure you've got john at test.com. If I hit send here, we get our 200 okay. And still some, some bad spelling, but it's not a train smash. So we've got our login handler that's passing in the username and the password. Then we hit this local strategy verify callback. So that's in our router. I mean, that's in this verify callback. So at this stage, we've got the real username and password, but like now we're kind of overriding and just sending a test through that's being received received in the authenticate callback here. And so this request.login is calling the session to be created. You'll see that the serialize user, which is this new function that we've implemented, is the, the fourth step in this flow. We've logged out the IDs test. If you head back to, to Postman, you're going to notice that the, the cookies now have been updated. And the way that this gets done is the response, if it's a 200 on this authenticate call, gets these headers called set cookie. And there, there's two cookies that get set, the, the app auth. And if we go back to our, our cookie session here, that's the name of the, the cookie that we've referenced here. And then you'll see there's a second cookie called auth.sig. So we can inspect these a little bit closer here. You'll see that this first cookie is a base encoded URL string. 
Um, and so, yeah, it, it's definitely not a JWT token, but we can head on over to the JWT tool and just paste it in here um, and remove the last four characters. This is the encoded cookie that we had on, on the Postman response. And once it's decoded, then you'll see that we have that that user and then we've got that item test so now that we can see that how this is all hanging together we go from the login handler into the the, the local strategy verify we authenticated in a callback in the router and then the last step here is to serialize the user that comes in okay so this is all coming together really nicely now we've got most of the moving parts that we need. Let's take a short break here because in the next one, we need to implement the actual logic that's going to check our DB with the email address, verify that the password's correct. And so that's a little bit of work and we'll take a short break here and I'll see you in the next one to get that done. Cheers for now.